friends, it's Mimi, and I have a confession to make. I fucked up my manuscript. Don't worry though, it's totally fixable. <laughs> I think I was about 54,000 words into my manuscript when I realized that I could not sustain it. So I had a specific vision for my work. I was writing about three best friends who were separated both by measures beyond their control and measures they could control. You know, that's that, that type of stuff like, you know, kidnapping, normal things like growing apart and stuff. I had this vision in my head that I was going to write Shadows Like Mountains following two of these best friends. One is Risa, the daughter of the saint, and we would follow in her timeline, like her backstory, memories of her childhood leading up to the kidnapping, and Laudio, her best friend growing up, and his time at university. For anybody who is more wise than I am, you should be shaking your fucking head right now. Because there was also like the present day. So it was literally two different timelines plus the present day. It was already a convoluted plan and I was like, oh, but I can pull it off. If I can like split up their their past stories into vignettes, then I was a I could I could put that together. Yeah, it was stupid. Laudio's story in the university became like this mass and it grew and it grew and it grew and it seriously dwarfed Risa's entire storyline when the book was supposed to be from her perspective for the most part and I realized that I could not sustain the novel this way so I had to split them up you know Laudio's story was 31,000 words out of that 54 and I had completely cut it up and it shortened the book I had so much and you know now that I've caught up to my word count again I look back on what the fuck I was doing. It's just so funny, you know, I'm a pantser and I don't have these things planned out. You know, I have like these little nuggets of ideas. It just, it just became this rabid dog that I couldn't control anymore. And I, I had the foresight to realize that there's just no way. So before finishing the manuscript, I cut them in two. And you know, anybody who was wiser than I am would have been like shaking their heads at what I thought I could do. You know, this is my first real original book. I've been writing fan fiction before this. This is my my first novel really and I'm just kind of slowly realizing how focused your novel has to be. Laudio's story was just completely a separate thing. For anybody wondering whether or not they can pull off the same thing because there's plenty of novels that have different points of views, you know, kind of like Game of Thrones, you know, you have what's happening in Westeros and then you have Daenerys's part, what's happening in Essos. But the difference between me and what George R. R. Martin was doing was kind of vast. And there's like two components to that. For one thing, A Song of Ice and Fire is cohesive, even though there's like all these moving parts moving around, right? What affects the Iron Throne affects literally every character. So there's like a focal point and everybody else is connected to it. So, you know, even though Daenerys is so far away, so far removed from what's happening in Westeros physically, what is happening in Westeros affects her destiny at her path to gain power back. You know, so there's still like an element that tied them all together. And in the way I shaped my story, those elements would have tied together eventually, not within book one, not within shadows like mountains. What Laudio was doing was just so separate from what Risa was doing that there was no cohesive element to tie the two together. And aside from, you know, the theme of cohesion, there's also an element of consequence that has to happen. Kind of like how I was saying what happens on the Iron Throne affects Daenerys's destiny and taking it back. The cohesive themes that you see in your story also need to have consequences. What one character does in a multiple perspective book needs to affect the other characters. So whatever the Lannisters are doing will affect the Starks, will affect the Martells, will affect the Targaryens, will affect literally every other small house it's like a reverberation. Jon Snow's departure into north of the wall, you have this impending doom that is brewing that you realize is going to change everything once the wall is breached. What I was writing was neither of those. What I was writing 
were two different stories that were going to intersect but much much later whereas with game of thrones you saw these consequences and these effects immediately so there was really no thread tying them together at all you know i had to split those books and i'm glad i had the foresight to split those books i can't imagine what would happen if i finished a whole fucking manuscript and then realized i had to delete 30 40 000 words from it because I fucked up. But you know what? There's there's benefits to splitting up books like that. My initial vision was never to have, you know, a series that had companion novels. But now that I have his story completely separated, it really just makes me think that maybe a companion novel might be a very good idea. And you know what that ends up doing? It ends up shrouding him in a bit of mystery in Shadows Like Mountains, where you wonder what the fuck was he up to when he was away in college and then of course when you get to book two you get to see behind the scenes his intentions what was motivating him what secrets he was actually keeping from her and it just adds to this layer of dramatic irony and i love dramatic irony it's one of my favorite tools in writing that i think is underused in a lot of the books i read like i only have things to gain from separating the two so it's not like it's not a decision I regret whatsoever. So if you're ever in the position where you're wondering if you should have multiple POVs in your book and you're not sure how to go about it, there's certain questions you can answer. The first question being why? You know, not all stories need multiple perspective to begin with. If your answer is to just enrich the story with backstory, that may not be enough depending on what story you're telling. You want at least some level of forward momentum when you're switching perspectives. So if you find that your character is just bogging the plot down too much, then it might be some rework. And that was kind of the reason why I ended up deciding to cut these two, like this book into two and give Laudio his own because his story also just felt like too much of a distraction. You also want to ask, is there an element that ties these two characters together? If you think about a book like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Addie and Henry's involvement with each other is just more tied together than just their relationship. They are tied together through Luke as well. And it only took one book to explore that dynamic. So like if you're multiple point of view characters don't share similar aspects or similar themes or even a similar villain it might be a good idea to rethink that third question are your characters creating future consequences for other characters you know consequence is the most compelling way to progress your plot you want to think of it as though all of your characters are playing the same chess game with each other serving consequence is a must for any plot so if you want to have these multiple perspectives it's especially necessary especially if you're going to interrupt your plot progression in order to explore different perspectives. The bonus question, if you do decide to cut your books into several different books, one per multiple um, point of view, you also want to ask yourself, should I give them books of their own? The short answer is only if their perspective is necessary to know the plot moving forward. Necessary. Necessary. That's the key word there. Thankfully though, I can answer that one with a yes when deciding to cut his part away from hers. All in all though, I'm, I'm quite just grateful that I was able to catch that so early. Risa's story now just seems so much more fluid, uh, much more concise, you know, especially now that I've gotten a title for Laudio's book, I, I feel so much more confident in moving forward with something like this. And then I don't have to like shake my head at myself anymore. You know, things are learned, things are done correctly. I can just move on from my shame. But I appreciate you listening to me with this very short video and like my failures upon writing this novel. At this point in time, I am now back at 53,000 words for Shadows Like Mountains. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. I, I just reached for crowning and I am dealing with difficult scenes and finishing them up and, you know, onward and upwards, right? If you have a gut feeling that something isn't working, then you listen to that feeling because I did have a feeling that this wasn't going to work out and I didn't listen to it for months and months and months for a year. It took me a year to get to that point before I cut this book in two. So just remember friends, be merry, uh, be thoughtful, practice Practice future insight is probably the most helpful thing for a pantser like me. If you want a video about future insight, I can definitely talk about that as well. But let me know in the comments what things you did to fuck your book up and let me know if you fixed them. Anyway, thanks for listening to my ramble. I don't know if any of that was even like sensible, but yeah, I will catch you on a different day. Peace out, y'all.